In this video, you're going to see how you can take your terminal appearance to the next level using item 2 and Z shell, including having auto suggestions as well as syntax highlighting. So let's start. I'm going to be following this gist over here, which is about how you can integrate item 2 with oh my ZSH. To get started, we will first need to install item 2. So to do that, we can run this command brew install dash dash cask. Or if you don't have homebrew installed, you can just go to the item 2 website and download it directly over here. Once you have item 2 installed, you can open that up using command space or by going to your finder. I'm just gonna open item up like this and make some space over here and drag it like that. And to start working on your theme, firstly, we can open up this link over here to look at the item 2 color schemes and you should be able to follow the installation instructions over here. So we've already launched item 2 and we can now do command I to open up the preferences. And if I drag it back over here, you can navigate to the colors tab over here. And now you'll need to load in your color presets. So over here, you should be able to see a load preset. And once you've loaded the presets, you can actually import them from your folder. You can actually select any of these pre-made themes. So for example, if I want to add in grape or graph box, I can do so. I'll select this. And to see what these themes are actually like, you can scroll through the page over here to look at what suits your taste. So let's say I can go with something like Graphbox. And now if I look at my color presets, I should be able to select Graphbox Dark. So as you install more presets, you can just scroll through them just like this to see what each of these themes will look like. And once you're satisfied, you can just click on that. And let's just say we want to go with Graphbox Dark and select that. And there you have your theme. In fact, if you just want to experiment with the different colors, you can actually go ahead and do comma comma to open up your settings and here you can actually see the different profiles that you have in items so currently i have the default over here i have a demo and this is my default that's why there's the star over here and again you can look at the colors and see what are the presets that you have so in this case to demonstrate i will use the demo profile that i have so if i were to go back over here and change this back to my original which is wombat and if i close this now if i go back here i can actually right click go to new window and say we want to create a new terminal with this profile demo and so if you open that up you can see this is currently my demo profile and then you can go ahead and do the customizations that you want so this is really useful if you want to have multiple profiles for different preferences and to customize the demo just click on it and let's say the colors you can select a different preset let's say graphbox dark and let's go with this zoom in a bit so you can see better so it's really quick and easy to be able to change the theme of your terminal. And if you want finer customizations, you can even click on the colors over here and drag to change the colors. So for example, if you have the foreground over here, if I just copy this to make sure I remember this color, I can actually just drag this around and you can see that the color is changing on the right side. And to reset, I'll just paste this back in and there we have it. While we're here, let's just see what else we can customize. So in the general tab, you should be able to see your Windows restoration policy. By default, this is all right. And you can go ahead and customize many of these settings. I would really recommend you to take a look at each of these and see which of these suits your preferences because this can be quite subjective and up to your taste. So for example, let's say you have multiple sessions, you can actually disable the confirmation pop-up that will appear. In the appearance, you can actually select the theme that you want for your terminal. If let's say I change this to regular, then you'll see that at the top, we have this title bar over here, which I frankly don't really like. So I'll go with minimal and this will be my default. Again, in the windows, you can show the window number in the title bar. So for example, if I go back to regular, show you to see the window number option command one over here. So if you have multiple terminals open, you can easily switch between them using option command one, option command two, and so on. And the rest of these tabs are probably gonna be less commonly used. So let's just skip over these for now. So we have set up item two. The next thing we want to set up is the Z shell. So if you're using a later version of MacBooks, you will probably have Z shell already pre-installed. But if not, you can go ahead and install it. So over here, we can install Z shell using the curl command. And I also highly recommend taking a look at the repo. So if you open this up in new tab, we can see here's all the information that you need. If you scroll down, you'll see how to install it and using plugins. But the one we really want to focus on is the themes over here. So to customize your themes, you can open up these screenshots over here to see what other themes that you have available. So most of these will customize the prompt that you see over here. So currently mine is this, which is the Apple theme. So if I search for Apple, this is the theme that I currently have. To customize that theme, you can just go into your ZSHRC file. So what's going on here? If you go to the homepage over here and go to the FAQs, I think it's pretty important to actually read up on these FAQs because they explain a bit about what exactly is Z-Shell and how do you customize it. So for example, some information about the Zish RC file. And this is really important because they actually point out here that if you're making changes to this Zish RC file, so this file can actually be found in your home directory. So if I go to my home directory and open up the .zish RC, you should be able to see your configurations over here. And if let's say we make a change, if currently I'm using the Apple team and if I were to change this to the AF Magic team, and if I save these changes, 
the proper way to actually reload your terminal is not to run the source command, which is quite common if you're using bash terminal or other kinds of terminals. In this case, the right way to do this is to restart the terminal. So to do that, we can quit out of this using command Q and reopen item and you should be able to see that the theme is actually changed. So before that, I had something different. This time I have this arrow keys over here. So again, if I were to change this back to the original over here, I'll add this comment and uncomment this. Again, quit and open up the item. Now we see that the changes have taken effect. So that's your configuration file. The other file that's related to Zish is the Z profile file. So this is also found in the same directory, but it will be called .z profile. And this is basically where you can store all your aliases for commands. I won't be going through that in this video, but if you'd like to learn more, do drop a comment down below. But again, back to the Zish RC file. So as we have seen before, the way you can change your theme is to just simply change your Zish theme over here to whatever you want. So here I have a couple of themes that I like. If you want to explore more, you can scroll through the themes over here to see which kind of prompt do you really like. All right, so next up we have, besides Oh My Zish, we can actually use Power Level 10K. So Power Level 10K basically offers you many more options when you're customizing your terminal so to do that you can actually git clone this so if i exit out here and for me i've already installed the repo so we should see that we should get an error but once you have installed you can edit your rc file to set this zish theme to this power level 10k slash power level 10k so in my rc file i have this on line 14 over here i can uncomment this and now comment this and save those changes and they tell you to start a new terminal session. Open an item again. This time we get a prompt for us to start the customization. So let's just go with yes. And I'm just going to run through some of the basic configurations. At this point, it's really up to you the level of customization that you want for your terminal. You don't have to install Power Level 10K if you feel that the existing themes already work well enough for you. For me, I already like the theme that I've installed, so I don't actually use Power Level 10K. But if you prefer something that's easy to customize, then you can try something like this. So let's say, let's go with yes. Does this look like a Debian logo? Let's just say yes, uh, yes. And here you can actually go with something lean, classic. I'm going to go with something lean, Unicode. 256 colors. Here they ask you if you want to show the time at the right corner over here. Let's just go with something simple like 2 just to see what it looks like. Prompt type, let's go with one line because I'm used to that. Prompt spacing, let's go with compact. Icons, we'll go with few icons. Concise. Transient prompt, let's go with yes with a Y. And let's go with the recommended option here, 1. Again, let's go with yes for apply changes. And now we should see here's the theme that we customized using Power Level 10K. So Power Level 10K offers a whole lot more and is extremely configurable. So do check out its project page if you want to customize further. But if not, let's move on and take a look at fonts. So for fonts wise, here are a few options that you can go with. One that I use is the Powerline fonts. So if you open this up, you can actually follow the instructions to install this. On other environments, for example Mac, I will use these commands over here. So git clone, cd into fonts, do a dot slash install, and then do some cleaning up over here. So if you go back here to look at the fonts in item, you can actually go to item preferences profiles. So let's go ahead, open up the preferences. And let me just go ahead and edit my appearance over here back to minimal. And as they say here, we can go to profiles and go to text and take a look at the fonts over here. You can actually select the font that you want. For me, the default is great, so I'll just stick with Monaco. So now we've covered the basic customizations for item as well as Zish. If you scroll down, we can see other suggestions for tweaking. So for example, auto suggestions is one plugin that I have installed. To install this, just follow the steps over here. So if I open this up, you can see it's as simple as cloning the repo, which I've already done. If I clone this, I get an error as suspected. Once you have it installed, you can go into your Zish RC file. So let's go ahead and do that and open this. So as you just saw, that was the auto suggestions in action. So if I type in vim or just v, I'm already able to see a suggestion for the command that I want to run. So to accept this suggestion, your instinct might be to press tab, but tab is already reserved for other purposes like the default autocomplete. So in this case, you can actually do the right arrow key or the control E command. So both ways would work. And if I open this up and scroll to the bottom and look for, let's say plugins, we should be able to see over here, the plugins on line 83 over here. Simply add in Zish dash auto suggestions, save the file and restart your terminal. And you should be able to see the suggestions showing up. A couple of other points to take note if you look at the uh, homepage on GitHub and scroll down, you should be able to see regarding highlight style, you can actually change the highlight style to whichever color that you want using the zish underscore auto suggest underscore highlight. But I think another way you can do this is to actually go to your item settings. So under profiles, color tab and take a look at, let's see, under my profiles, select the profile that you have, colors, and you can actually see the black bright value. So over here, we see black and then bright. So that's black bright. And let me just copy this to save this. If you were to drag this around and notice the color over here, you should see the color changing. 
and there we have it. All right, so next up we have word jumps and word deletion. So this I think is really a mind-blowing configuration, which I think should definitely be included because this is really convenient. If let's say I type in a command over here and I want to make some edits maybe in the middle of the command. And currently if I were to do option arrow keys, you see that I get some error over here. So to enable the word jumping, we can actually go into item preferences and again, go to profiles keys over here and select that, go to your presets, select natural text editing. And now if I try it over here, you see that I can actually jump through and edit my commands very quickly. Next, there is custom prompt styles, which you can change by editing the default user. But frankly, I find the Z shell that I'm using already good enough. So I'm gonna skip over this and go on to syntax highlighting. So again, syntax highlighting, if you have root installed, you can just run this command, which I already have installed. But if you don't, just follow the installation instructions over here. And once that's done, you can actually go into your Zish RC and add in this line of code over here. So let's just open up using Vim again, go to the end of the file, and at the bottom or somewhere in your file, just add in this line over here. And now if you type in Vim, you should see that it's colored like mine. Again, take note not to source your Zish RC file, but instead you should restart your terminal as they recommend over here. If you want to find out more, do check out the uh, GitHub page over here, and you'll be able to see how the appearance of your terminal will change. If you want to customize the colors of your highlighting, then just Let's just go with this first and open up your settings, go into your colors, under your profile, and under your green color, you can actually just change this by doing this, dragging it around and seeing what color fits your taste best. So if I want something that's actually green, I can go with this. And this would be the default way that your commands will be highlighted. So this time, if I run this command, you should see that I have Vim in green and the arguments in the yellowish color. Alright, so that's how you can take your terminal appearance to the next level. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, do give it a like and share it. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment down below and I'll definitely get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.